a survey. A survey. Uh, yeah, a lot of people in my field they uh, they're more intuitive than me. They tend to be to just go on and feel something and look around and see what they need to do. I I'm a bit more structured in the way I approach it, and right. I'll print a house out from Google Maps, the aerial view of Google Maps, yeah. and then I'll ask a number of questions: How many geopathic stress lines? Where are they? How many underground streams? How many char lines? How many beams from um, cell towers are crossing? How many ghosts on the property? How many ley lines are crossing and making vortexes? I ask all these questions and there's a whole heap of metrics that I get. And then I actually use my water divining rods and a, and a roller and a pen and I actually mark all these lines and things, draw them on the property, on the, on the page. And then I send it to the client and uh, I have a chat to them about what I think might be happening and how we might be able to help and some of the effects of some of the things that I'm seeing. And uh, if they want to go ahead and let me help them, I'm happy to help them. If not, then that's all good too, but I've educated them and then they might talk to someone else and then they might come back a little bit later. So mm. part of what I'm about is actually educating people in this space. Yeah. And also creating a curiosity of wondering, you know, why something isn't happening the way they want it to happen and things like that as well. So yeah. Yeah, well, you get a house, you're going talking to the real estate type people, you get a house in the street that uh, turns over every two years, basically, and the marriage breaks up or the relationship breaks up and it's back on the market again, takes forever to sell, and it's in this constant loop. And these are these houses that I'm talking about. They've got ley lines and, uh, sorry, vortexes and ghosts underneath them and uh, yucky stresses and things there. And that when people get into those environments, their personalities change. They can The, the worst side of them comes out and... Uh, yeah, and they get sick and, yeah, the, the whole world changes for them and they stagnate as well. So they get out and they can they can then move on. Um, but they don't the, realise it at the time what's going on for them. No, no. And, you know, if you've lived in a stressed house, you'll buy another stressed house because that's your comfort zone. You walk in the door and say, oh, wow, I love this house. Mm. But it's just as stressed as the last house because it feels comfortable. Yeah. So I, I don't charge to do surveys for people. Yeah. So what... what um uh you know a suggestion is that if someone's going to go and buy a house they could get you in to just check how it's sitting on the land and whether there's any stresses or anything like that around before they purchase it or decide on whether they want to purchase it or not yeah yeah so i don't charge to do surveys because it's part of its educational if they don't go ahead with it but uh yeah if people are wanting to move house i'll tell them what i can see and I don't see everything and I'm discovering new stuff to look at every day and I'll tell them what I think and what the what I think would take to keep it stable or uh, what's likely to happen there. And then they've got some information to make an informed choice, and, mm. uh, hopefully one that suits them. Some Most properties you can do something with, but some of them are more unstable than others. You know, sometimes I, I look at a property every 12 months, others I'm looking at every few weeks because of tunnelling and all sorts of stuff going on. The environment's so unstable that... It's very hard to keep a place stable. Mm, things keep changing under the ground, particularly when there's a lot of underground digging and and movement like that. And and new cell towers going in every day, and uh, uh, they said so they don't have to put a fence post in somewhere, and they might have upset a, a shale line, uh, a, a ley line, a, an uh, underground stream. Yeah, oh yeah, an underground stream or a uh, oh, these the, the the words are struggling to come for me today. The uh, the Charlet lines anyway, and uh, um, yeah, they can upset that for sort of kilometres. And you keep on talking about the... Meridians is the word I was actually after. I told you I was struggling today. Meridians. <laughs> Charm meridians. You, oh, okay, I'm just going to put my divining rods out and I'm just going to clear you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, well, I've been on the go for six weeks without a break, so yeah, their, their old brain's a little bit, uh, bit numb today. Oh, that's all right. The, you keep on talking about the towers, the towers that are on top of buildings and things. Do they put something on the roofs of these buildings so that all that that negativity doesn't go through the building where people are actually living or working? Not that I've seen. Not that you've seen. No, mm. not not this effect. It's very hard to stop radio waves. You can you can sort of divide, divert them past things. Um, yeah, well, I, use, I, have... I use things like uh, tensor rings and uh, some biogeometric shapes and bits and pieces to try and neutralise what I can. 
Um, well, we you look at all the the waves and things. You you've got your microwave. <laughs> you've got you've got um, your induction cooktops. They're all um, waves of energy that are aren't natural. Then you've got the Wi-Fi traveling through your house. All these sorts of things are going through your house. Um, yeah, we're in a we're in a super stresses. That's for sure. <laughs> if you if you look at um, negative Hartman carry lines, you know, there I, I find where where two of Earth's magnetic lines intersect on something electrical, be it a switch or a switchboard or a transformer out on a pole. It actually radiates out like a Wi-Fi in the room and actually also affects the magnetic field in the Earth. So, you know, if you're on a building that's uh, that's on a slab filled with uh, Rio, you know, metal, so that's travelling out, I, I believe, or I've been told that you know, some of these transformers that might be on one of these nodes, you know, things can radiate out for kilometres. Um, personally, when I find them, I, they give me headaches and uh, I'll, put a, I'll put an energy ring on them to, to harmonise them and my head, headache disappears. Nothing that you can measure, but you can feel it. You can feel it. Yeah. Okay. But when when you're in a home and you're you you know, you're continually well and then sick and well and then sick, what sort of things do you need to be looking for? The person that's living in the home, what sort of things do they need to be looking for? Yeah, well the uh even when you fix a house, uh, Traditionally, that that uh, that Jim answer would fix a house and they'd never come back, but you know that that was a thousand years ago, and we've got so much more stuff that disturbs the earth and stuff happening around us these days. Um, so when I fix a house, the people need to be aware that they get a step change. So all of a sudden they're getting chronic coughs and colds, or things aren't quite right. People aren't sleeping. Um, things things like ghosts in houses and. Um, where two ley lines cross. If they don't cross in a perfect T, you get a very negative space, negative vortex. And if you're sleeping on one of those, it can often trigger sensitive people into you know, getting the black dog depression and stuff settling in. Um, and you could fix all those things and you get a big change in the environment and then you've got to go around and reset it all. So Is, is that left. a maintenance thing that needs to happen as well? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, because definitely. of the constant change in the earth and the movement and... And things like that, and technology, uh, te yeah. And Australia, you know, in certain parts, are starting to have more vibrations in the ground, which upset whatever's going on at the time. Anyway, you know, uh, mini earthquakes and earthquakes that are a bit bigger, and things like that that we've never really had previously or never really noticed. Maybe it's the monitoring of the of the um what did I just say? <laughs> you're, you're, you're getting my disease now. So so basically there I think there's more people monitoring this stuff. So if there's an earthquake or an accident or something happening, someone's there with a phone and they're filming it. So so we 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 wouldn't have heard about something now. It's it's being brought to the front if we if we watch the news and, and Facebook and that sort of thing. And so it's more more in, in our face. Yeah, yeah. Um, and when we talk about ghosts and things too, that they do follow people home, they attach to people and uh, they can affect your, your mental health as well. And because they're not meant to be here, they actually drain our life force. So that's why a room will go cold when a ghost comes in. And uh, you, there's all sorts of other energetic parasites and things out there. And uh, this, this is where I, I think differently to most people, I don't look for dark things in the world. Uh, I, I look at things as a as a food chain. There's other beings out there that like to feed out our emotions and stuff, and they've just got a different rule base to us. It doesn't make, make them bad because they don't comply with our rules. We we'll us fit into their their rules, and uh, yeah, that's um, you, you're going to go out in the world and you're in the food chain. Uh, you know, go into a line park and come out as line poo. It's, <laughs> it's that sort of thing. Ooh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, don't think so. But it, it, it's interesting to look at how um, your your energy and your mindset can change if you've gone in and done some work on a home. But it's then it's a bit like doing your exercise. It's a bit like cleaning your house. It's all about maintenance, isn't it? 
It's not yeah. about because things are always changing all the time, the energies and the, the underground streams and things because of the the disturbance to the to the underground from the the digging and the developing and all that sort of stuff. Um, very interesting, you know. They've they, they've even found underground cities in places now. I wonder what sort of vibrations and energies those underground cities are giving off. That'd be interesting. Yeah, well, I always always look at a house like a uh, an old hotel mattress. You know, you just don't want to even think about what's happened on it over the years. <laughs> Uh, but but things have happened on the land, so you know even even in in our space, any any race has only been a custodian of the land. No one owns land. It's uh, it's, it's only for a period of time. Man's only been on the world for a period of time, and probably the uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex or something before that. But um, stuff's happened on the earth, and you know whether it's uh, within the last hundred years. Actually, I find where yucky stuff's happened on the earth, there's often uh, ley lines and things in those sort of spaces, but usually something's happened a hundred years or a thousand years before that. Before that, so people tend to get to those places, and and people change, and and yucky stuff happens. And uh, you know they they build they build things on land. I mean, you know these days, well, they've stopped doing it now, but it's interesting. They make parks out of um, what we used to call tips once upon a time. And yeah. all the methane gases and things that can come up after a while from all the all the stuff that's been buried underground is there's the colouring and the metals and all these sorts of things that have been buried under the ground, which will gradually, you know, crumble away. Can't think of another word uh, yeah. for for it. And then it turns into a gas, which then seeps up out of the earth and makes people ill. The methane yeah. gas. Yep. And and people yeah, same, have had to move houses. Yeah. When you when you look at building biology, and I'm no building biologist, but I know bits and pieces. But you know, the discharge from carpets. Well, you've worked in the carpet space. Yeah. Uh, sort of um, things coming out of the plastics and and whatnot in the house. It's uh, yeah, well, more more. You know, Years years ago, with all the glues and things, where they used to stick things down onto the floors, all that stuff was so toxic it was ridiculous. They don't do that now, but and and a good thing as well that the glues and things that they use are not so toxic as they used to be once upon a time. So yeah, it's hard to do these days, isn't it? They, they don't know it's toxic till ten years or twenty years down the track, and then they change their mind on it. And, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. You look at Roundup and those sort of things these days. You know, they they're all brought out as safe, and now they're not as not as good as they thought they were in that space. Um, you just don't know until you try it for long enough. Um, yeah, yeah. So when someone gets you to come and visit them, what sort of symptoms do they normally have if they're living in a home? Um, interesting that probably 95% of my clients are ladies and yep. they've often got a small family that they're trying to, to look after and maintain and keep healthy and fit and they're often a little bit more open-minded. Um, I think a lot, a lot of us guys tend to be uh, just uh, bringing in the, men, in the money and, uh, and managing that sort of space. And I suppose that's happening these days because of mortgage stress and stuff. Both partners are often working. But, uh, yeah, I think it's part of managing a house. And when they're in tune with what's going on in the house, then they're more aware of some of this stuff. And, um, yeah, they're, they're seeing their kids change. And, you know, if you could change house, or you said before, you, you know, you go to a place. And I've, I've heard of people changing personalities on a place. Uh, I actually spoke to, to a guy and he said that uh, him and his wife had a big disagreement on this place where they parked their caravan. And then they realised they parked their caravan in that same space about five or six years before, and same thing happened. Moved the caravan, and they didn't have the problems. Really? This is this is a guy that works in my space as well. So, oh, all right. Uh, yeah, okay. There's, there's, there's all sorts of uh, sorts of memes out there, but yeah, people oft, often when a house gets ratty, the kids get ratty. Um, I also run a, an energetic hygiene program where I clear stuff from people when people picking up energetic parasites and ghosts and things that attach to people and uh, especially people who work in people's energy fields so you're talking about massage people and um, hospital workers all that sort of stuff they're 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 around people's field all the time a lot of uh, natural healers and stuff and if they're, Reiki if they're and yeah. acupuncture and 
kinesiology, all those sorts of people would be picking up the energies off other bodies yeah. when they're working with them. And when you, when you think about it as a food chain, someone who's sick is going to see someone like that. And if they're carrying a lot of parasites, then they're passing it on and you're keeping this food chain happening. So, so I've, I've got a number of people that I, I clear them three times a week and uh, try and keep that load to a minimum. And I was actually speaking to one of them a few months ago. I said, do you get the benefits from the clearings? And she said, Pete, it's 7 o'clock on a Friday. Kids are ratty. Everyone's arguing. All of a sudden, it's gone quiet. I turn around at 7 o'clock. I think, ah, there's Pete. He's just cleared the place and reset it. Mm. So, so they, they do notice the difference. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they're, they're able to move forward with their lives too. They're, they're planning and they're doing stuff. They're not in that stagnant space. Some of these, some of these stresses on the house will stagnate you. You know, you're just not going to move forwards. It's interesting, isn't it? How how a certain energy can be somewhere you don't realise it, or it could be the ghosts, or even vampires. We've had vampires, <laughs> we? um, yeah, and things like that. And you sort of think, oh, vampires? What are they doing in my house? You know, it's um. I should clarify there. We don't want to scare people, but uh, I find that, that sometimes some some <laughs> people who die and they're there as a ghost and they get trapped where the event happened, and they tend to drain energy from people in the area. So because uh, they suck, I call them vampires. But that's just more uh, my tongue in cheek uh, way of looking at that space. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we're we're going for a break, and so.